still see it actually as almost a perfectly costumed film. You know, like uh, uh, there's there's elements of it that you kind of go just simply because you didn't have the money to do something bigger. But I think within those boundaries, it's still a very good piece of film. And it was fascinating to follow Peter's um, view of it, you know, like, you know, re really, there was so much information about it. There was so much information that you could absorb about that, um, um, the family dynamics of those two families and sort of try and bring that, you know, into it that sort of absolutely lower middle class world and, um, you know, the, the, the sort of university world of um, the other family. I loved it. And, um, and there, was a, there was a life lesson there for working with Peter Jackson. It was on day one. Um, we had so struggled to get those school uniforms together. I mean, we had um, one of the mills, which of course no longer exist in New Zealand making fabric for the school uniforms. And, you know, the numbers I'm gonna quote now aren't going to be right, and Peter would slap me because he probably remembers exactly um, how many it was. But whatever the number of um, school uniforms we were supposed to have, we were probably 10 short or something. And I was just like, that's just gonna to have to do. And, um, and Peter just went ballistic, you know, because he had it all mapped out in his mind and um, um, and he was felt really frustrated by that. Um, so I remember we were racing around making kind of basketball bib versions of the tops of the school uniforms to kind of fill it in. Um, so you make a wee note in your notebook. When they ask for that number, you give them that number. Zena had appeared in an episode of um, Xena and Hercules in a different outfit um, that Barb Dara had done when she was doing Xena. Well, it was Hercules. And then we created the Xena world subsequently. And um, it was Chloe Smith who um, got me in for the interview for it. Um, and that was, I mean, you know, I bang on about this often because I still think it was the greatest learning curve ever. And I think that, um, I'm, you know, I don't know what the Rob Tappet, Chloe Smith world is like now, but um, I'm sure it's not that different. It was vastly collaborative, outrageous, good fun. You know, I mean, you were pumping all the time. And when, um, when you find yourself in a situation where you're doing two shows at once, because I think I came on um, just on Hercules first, and then they came up with Xena, and suddenly your world is expanding, and as a designer, your role is, you've got to be enormously creative, but you're also sort of managing people. And I, you know, there were enormous numbers of people working on those shows. We had a tiny amount of um, pre-production because nobody had any idea what was going to be achieved, you know. So, so it, the momentum and design of it was something that was ongoing all the way through it. And um, I really reached out for um, trying to find very specific design elements for each part of it, you know, like Celtic for the world of Rohan and um, Art Nouveau and Fortuny when I was thinking about the elves and sort of using those as the stepping stones and, um, um, you know, countryside Britain circa 18 something or other for hobbits. And so, so you start to build a language for them because one of the things that you really wanted and Peter definitely wanted was that people believed in these worlds, you know, like that they felt that they were quite real. And, um, and that was the ongoing theme all the way through it. If it didn't quite work in one area, the next time you, you, you'd learnt so much from that, the next time you were facing that one, you could sort of redouble your efforts. We had all learnt. It was um, um, it was a 
major learning curve about all kinds of technical things as well, you know, like dyeing techniques and embroidery techniques and weaving techniques and, um, you know, your, your vocabulary of costume is just expanding all the time. And without that five years on Xena and Hercules, there was absolutely no way I could have pulled that off. And um, even then, at certain points in the proceedings, you're just thinking, I just can't keep going. Um, but that is, you know, the, the heart and the hell of filmmaking, isn't it? That you do. It hasn't changed my perception of myself at all. Um, I still, um, yeah, I, I think basically I am the same person, still trying, um, um, still worrying, still, um, is it good enough? Um, in the industry, um, particularly in the American industry, it's, it gives you a huge level of respect. You know, the view is you don't get an Academy Award for being mediocre. That's just, and in fact, when you're working in the American industry and you realize just how vast it is comparatively, you get it and it actually makes you try even harder in that industry. Because the film industry is in such a strange state of flux, um, certainly in the last couple of years, I found myself in an incredibly strange position where I've been doing work on a lot of films that never get made. And that wasn't even part of the deal when I started in film. You know, everything you began on became a film. Whereas now, um, the rule of thumb is to bring in the creatives, do the concepts, um, look at it all, and then <clears throat> give it a yay or nay. And that is, that can suck up a lot of your, you know, creative energy. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of good things still to do.